but cameramen, script supervisors, fire safety officers, costumers, and countless others. Yeah! With your support, we'll all keep on working. I don't think that's the whole truth because I don't think they would earn much more money uh, without people downloading. Just, just trying to keep on making money by selling a small plastic disc with, uh, with information on them is, is obviously something that won't last. But they have to find new ways. So there were like hundreds of really creative people and they, if they think like, they can find out new ways. It's not my job. It's not going to happen tomorrow, of course. So I really hope that just, and it will, the society and all the, uh, the stuff around, the, the music industry and the bands and everything, it will, will change. So, you know, it will be different, I think. And I don't think there's going to be, uh, you know, producers and PR people. And then the next day it's going to be everybody downloads. No one gets, uh, no one gets paid, and all the musicians, you know, will die and starve to death and so on. Uh, a lot of what the major media companies do today are so, so obviously based around the copyright, the copyright model. I mean, uh, in in the U.S. you speak about the temp temple model. You fi find a you find a space of intellectual property that's, that ha hasn't yet been claimed, and you, you put you, you put your tent, tent pole down and raise a whole tent up around it. Like for example, if you make a movie, you also sell plastic toys and and, and such, which kind of makes up makes up the tent. And, and obviously, that that sort of model is, uh, would be impossible with uh, with a different intellectual property climate. They have managed to adapt historically. When the first first tape recorders came, oh no, people will be able to copyright music yeah, and and such. So, uh, and when the the first video recorders came, it was the same. Oh no, people people will copy our copy our property, and we won't make any money. But obviously, they they were able to adapt to that also. It's analogous to the complaint that was made against uh, the video cassette recorder 20 years ago, 30 years ago, when the industry did exactly the same crybaby act and said, you know, people recording films off television is going to put us out of business. Well, it didn't. It actually created another revenue stream, and they were able to sell video cassettes at the same time as people taped off air. And in the end, they were, the studios were proved wrong in the courts, and the courts decided against them. But 30 years ago, the, co the courts were much more pro-consumer. Now they're much more pro-corporate. I think that uh, the music we see on uh, MTV and these music channels, that kind of music will disappear, more or less. And I don't care because I don't even like it. And we will have uh, music which is more for the listeners and not just for people to make money on it, you know, 25 million dollars per album, it's, I think it's absurd. I don't want to, I don't want to give money to them, I think it's so wrong, it would just, it would be, it's against my moral and my ethics. I think that the law is going to be rewritten as the technology insists that it is, you know, it's not a question of right or wrong anymore. Um, people will do what they want to do in, in order to, uh, get what they want all the you know, what's the line about every behind every great fortune lies a great crime so the guys who started this business all cheated somebody to get there and so now they're being cheated perhaps uh, file sharing is not a problem it's an opportunity there's a Chinese proverb saying that when the winds of change are blowing some people are building shelters and others are building windmills it's interesting in historical perspective that up to the 70s, recorded music was rather seen as a threat against musicians by, for example, musicians' unions and collecting societies. Instead, it was totally obvious to them that live performances was and remained the main revenue stream for musical performers. Then, after the cassette tape explosion, it was some kind of capitulation to recorded music. And it, and it was a golden age for the uh, for recording industry with the CD. But 
if we look backwards today, that rather really looks like a historical parenthesis. And I would say that live performances are again turning to, to be the, the main revenue stream for musicians, most musicians. It's one of the great ironies that our enemy in this is our consumer. And one of the rules that anybody in marketing knows is not make an enemy of your customer. Uh, we have no choice because, uh, frankly, when the music is being consumed for free, they're no longer customers that we can look after, um, nor customers that we want. It is ridiculous to believe that you can give product away for free and be more successful. I mean, it defies the laws of nature. Would, would a clothing store sell, give all their clothes for free? A car dealership give all their clothes, cars for free? Of course not. Now, it doesn't mean you don't do some promotions and you don't use advertising creatively, but nobody can make, a, a, if they don't make a profit in this world, they're out of business. That's just the laws of human nature. Matrix is a system, Neil. That system is our enemy. But when you're inside, you look around, what do you see? Businessmen, teachers, lawyers, carpenters, the very minds of the people we are trying to save. But until we do, these people are still a part of that system, and that makes them our enemy. You have to understand, most of these people are not ready to be unplugged. And many of them are so inert, so hopelessly dependent on the system, that they will fight to protect it. Were you listening to me, Neo? Or were you looking at the woman in the red dress? I was... Look again. Freeze it. If you are not one of us, you are one of them. What are they? They are guarding all the doors, they are holding all the keys, but they will never be as strong or as fast as you can be. Politicians can never stop the file sharing movement. movement. It's always going to be about the young people doing what they want. If they don't uh, think the laws are worth obeying, they won't obey them. I don't think that uh, the American government or, or anybody else can, can stop like, uh, uh, what's, what's happening on the internet uh, when it comes to downloading files. They maybe in the short run they can make uh, some small uh, like, uh, ways to like, uh, fight uh, Pirate Bay, but I think in the long run the, they cannot control it. The internet, it's too big, you can't fight against it. Mm -hmm. It uh, will always be possible to, <laughs> to share and download. I don't think you, no one can stop it. <laughs> it's new technique, <clears throat> and I think uh, people will find ways to use it anyway. The technology is always evolving, so uh, the lobbyists will have a hard time to catch up with the file chairs. So I think they will always be one step behind. I don't even believe they're not police state crap that they will get through with it. People will always try to share ideas and share files. I think file sharing will last forever. 